Good evening. My name is Michael Williamson. It's my privilege to be the director of Year 13 and to welcome family, friends, church supporters of our Year 13 students as tonight we launch our Fiji Mission 2017. so pleased that you were able to be here and join us. We delayed the start a little for uh, one particular reason. A whole bunch of people got stuck on the other side of the school. We hope you've now made the trek around the school. We're sorry that we don't control the gates, but we're pleased that you've finally been able to join us and hope uh, there's not too many more who are stuck on the other side of the school. Uh, but also, there is a person who is going to be very sad at the end of the night. Uh, so the owner of a white Nissan Murano CIZ42V. Your lights are on. Uh, everyone look the other way while they leave. Uh, because you might want your car to drive at the end of the night, if that's you, uh, you might not attend that. At Year 13, we love Fiji. We love what God has enabled us to do there over the last nine years. Uh, we love the fact that we've now sent just under 600 students to Fiji in consecutive missions year after year. And we love the way Fiji changes us while we're there. And we really love your support of the students as you send us and as we go through all that we go through together each year. And tonight you're going to get a, a glimpse of what it looks like, a glimpse of what we have planned as we head into the year. And the person who's going to take us through that night uh, is the brains of the outfit when it comes to Fiji, our Dean of Students, Mrs. Trinette Stanley. <laughs> bring some other parts to you, uh, but Trina's going to take us right through, and how about I now commit our time together to the Lord in prayer. Would you bow your heads again? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of the heavens and the earth, you are the God of the whole world, you're the God of this country, and you certainly are also the God of Fiji. We thank you that you have the whole world in your hands, you have us in your hands, and so we commit this night to you now, asking you to bless our time together to teach us all kinds of amazing things, to encourage us and help us to look forward with eyes set on the mission for us in Fiji. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, uh, family, supporters, thank you so much for coming tonight and showing your support of E13 2017. It is such a joy and a privilege to meet together as we commission our students for the Fiji mission that is ahead. Uh, the role that you play in partnership and support of the students is crucial and we couldn't do what we do without it. So thank you and thank you for being here tonight. Our aim tonight is to give you a glimpse into what our Fiji mission is all about. Our ministry in Fiji is far reaching as we push out of the major centres into smaller communities and villages and towns. It's a ministry that has deep roots as Year 13 continues to go to the same places year after year after year. Uh, some of the places that we'll go to this year is the 10th time that Year 13 has visited. It's a ministry that our friends in Fiji are asking for. Uh, we, don't, we go on the invitation of locals. Uh, we work in partnership with local churches and schools and we try and we strive to not impose ourselves on the locals. And ultimately we pray that our ministry in Fiji is a ministry that brings glory and honour to Jesus our Saviour. Throughout our service tonight we want to take you through each aspect of our Fiji program. You'll hear a little bit from me about each of those aspects. We'll get to see some videos of the students that were filmed last week during our training week. You'll get to hear from our Fijian ministry partners and we'll spend some time in prayer for each aspect of the ministry program. Uh, one of the great joys that we have in going to Fiji is that our understanding of God explodes as we experience his creativity, his sovereignty, and his world in a whole new way. And so we're going to start tonight by reminding each other of God's great power and God's great creativity as we sing all creatures together. Please stand as we sing. <laughs> Yeah. 
uh, getting alongside the people, getting to know them, encouraging them, supporting them. Um, we do that obviously around the Bible and Jesus Christ, and that makes a big difference. Uh, so they really want that. Um, also, uh, just developing things for this year. Um, we're doing more in the high schools. Um, we had things keep changing, and the principal changed this year, but it looks like it's going to go all right. But, uh, we're doing some good things in high school, so we're going to keep doing that way. And uh, we've also been asked to uh, do more in the Northern Ireland. Um, they, they're really keen for us to keep coming up there and sending more teams. And there's another village that's uh, asked us to go there. And uh, it's a little bit more isolated, but it's really probably worth the trip out there. And so we've got to sort of set that up and see if that's a go for next year, too. Um, we keep expanding what we do. Um, Mainly because they really ask us, they almost plead with us, can you come, will you come? Um, and uh, it's good if we can and come and support and encourage and what we can do. So it would be fair to say that as much as possible things are lined up for our arrival in a month's time, given PG time and everything is subject to change, the things are lined up and they're ready for our arrival? I'd like to think so, but last year, last year I worked it out that some pieces, some people I actually spoke to five times, emailed, and actually visited them before we went there, came back and did more stuff, went over there and still, and they said, oh, yes, 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 yes. Finally, we get over there, it's fall through. And I'm like, whoa, what else you got to do? <laughs> no, sometimes things just don't work out. And, it, and they can, uh, sometimes things can change over there beyond the people's control. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's coming together. And we're trying, every year, trying to work out, well, who's more reliable and who's more constant and, I think we're getting that there. And I've actually planned more stuff than we could probably not. I've planned extra stuff this year, so if something goes wrong, we won't be sitting around doing that. All right, thanks, Wayne. Uh, can we just thank Wayne for his time? <laughs> So we're doing a lot of um, going to different people's houses and um, just the prospect of doing that uninvited and just um, chatting with people and praying with them is really scary, but I'm excited. I'm really excited to meet more of God's people and also slightly nervous, um, yeah, because it's something I've never done before. Probably really nervous about disrespecting them. Um, I always struggle following rules in general, so I feel like I'm going to just disrespect them in some way. I'm nervous about not sleeping in my own bed for an entire month. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be like, I suppose forced to think about Christianity and sharing the Bible with people is not just something that you do in like cushy, like mainland or you do in your home or whatever. It's something which we're called to take to other places and it's meant to be uncomfortable I suppose. So I suppose I'm excited to be forced to have, to grow a heart for mission and like I'm excited that might be a possibility in the future I suppose. 
Oh, I'm so keen. It's going to be such a good time. I can't wait to uh, be able to meet my homestay families and see all the kids. And ah, it's going to be so good. So what I'm excited about for Fiji is to go to Namoon Banda and uh, yeah, just get to know the village there and get to spend some time with the kids there and play with them. I just reckon I'll and it'll be so good. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about the Fiji time because um, I like structure, but I'm really excited. Um, I'm feeling pretty keen. I'm looking forward to getting over to Fiji and seeing what it's like. I'm keen to buy Sulus and just be wearing them the entire time. Um, I hope to grow in confidence in sharing the gospel with um, my friends and people I know, but also people I don't know. I think it will be awesome going to Fiji and then seeing how all these people are worshipping God as well on a completely different like, side of the planet. So we're going over there and it's just going to be insane to see how big God is and to understand more so that He is un unfathomable. So I'm keen to take away that for Fiji. Um, I'm hoping to grow independence, um, more dependence on God. It's been a big thing for me this year, um, but also just to grow in feeling uncomfortable all the time, just with, I like being clean and just like feeling comfortable and nice all the time, so that's a big thing, yeah. I hope to grow being more on fire about um, overseas mission work, because that's what I want to do um, later. I find sometimes in our Western society, we might not rely on God as much as we possibly could, so just being able to rely more on Him in every situation. Um, I've never really experienced people that have been living in the third world before. I've never seen people living in poverty and I'm really keen to see how they're relying on God and what I can learn from them. Um, I hope that my prayer life will really be strengthened and that um, throughout the whole time there that I'll um, grow stronger in relying on God more. I'm really hoping to learn lots of skills about how to share the gospel to people um, and I'm really hoping to take away lots of uh, missionary evangelistic techniques that I can use in my everyday life after I've come back from Fiji. I want to want God, I want to want that to seek Him, to know Him, to not have Him come to me, but for me to want to run to Him. Um. <coughs> How are you feeling about Fiji? We're going to Fiji. That's it. <laughs>
This is not about getting an authentic Fijian experience. It's about sharing our lives with people. Rather than just going to the schools and running a program and then heading to a hotel at the end of the day, we want to share our lives and our faith with those people we minister with. Master Longa at Nasakawa Vision College often tells us how excited he is to have Year 13 at his school. Because we don't just come in and give a program, we don't just come and do service work, we share our lives with people. He is very thankful that there are young, enthusiastic Australian Christians who seek to serve Jesus and live for him in all aspects of their lives. And he is thankful for the witness that we are to his students. As I mentioned, we'll be running classes uh, during our time at Nasakawa and Lombasa High School. Last week at training week, some of our students worked up some skits for us to use during that time. Uh, here's a little sample of what we will be doing whilst in Fiji, particularly at Nasakawa and Lombasa High Schools. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. But the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places. It did not have much soil there, so it sprang up quickly. But because the soil was shallow, when the sun came out, the plant was scorched and withered away. Other seed fell along the thorns. The seed grew up, but the thorns choked the plant and it did not bear grain. Still, other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown.
Lord, we also lift up to you the homestays, that we would be a blessing to the families that we are staying with, and that it would be a mutual time of encouragement, growth, and cultural learning for both us and the locals. Lord, we pray that you'll provide us with safety while we spend time with these families, and that you'll help us with any uncertainties we have. We pray, Lord, that you'll provide us with wisdom and comfort as we do further preparations for Fiji, and, in, and that in all things you'll be glorified. Lord, thank you that you are a merciful God and that you love us endlessly. We thank you that you provide us with opportunities to spread the gospel in Fiji. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Even though we spend the majority of our time in Fiji in smaller village and town settings, we do get to spend some time in the Fijian capital of Suva. Our Suva mission gives us the opportunity to experience uh, ministry in Fiji in a big city context and in a context that has a transient community. Year 13 has developed relationships with the Anglican, Methodist and Baptist churches in Suva and we're seeing great fruit from those relationships. We create a lot of things into our time in Suva. We'll have the opportunity to train leaders on how to read, understand and teach the Bible. Students will be involved in youth ministries with around eight different churches. Uh, school assemblies in classes in about four or five different schools. And they'll be serving in a variety of different ways at church on Sunday. From running youth ministry sports days to engaging with locals in the marketplace, visiting those who live in slum areas to pray for them, fellowshipping with university <coughs> students, hearing from long-term gospel workers in Fiji and doing manual labour at a women's refuge, the students have their work cut out for them while we're in Suva. We're very thankful to God for the doors that he's opened to ministry in Suva. And we're very thankful for what we learn from our Fijian brothers and sisters while we are there. In Wayne's recent trip to Suva, he spoke with one of our ministry partners from Dilkusha Methodist Church about our time there. Please look to the screen as we hear from Reverend Edwin Binod as he reflects on Year 13's involvement with Dilkusha Methodist Church. Yeah, I'm Reverend Edwin Sami, based here in Dilkusha, no sorry. Uh, we have been helping this year taken for the past six years and our youth has really enjoyed uh, having their presence in the church for their commitment especially when they come in some some of the testimonies they come and share as they come from overseas and you know like here in Fiji uh, many times they are challenged to some of those people those especially those year taken students where when they come from this wealthy family you can say and uh, when they come here and share those kind of testimonies it really encourages our youth too. And we are looking forward, again, to be with them this year. And I hope that uh, it will also enlighten and encourage our youths here. And at the same time, uh, they love our ministry here in Dilkusha. And we look forward for them to come. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Mick. I'm one of the staff here at U13. I'm going to interview a couple of students now. So come on, guys. <laughs> Please tell us your oh, full name, uh, what stream you're in, and uh, what church you go to. Full name. Full name. Uh, my full name is David Samuel Murray. Um, I go to Christchurch Batesville, um, and I'm in Blue Stream. Uh, my full name is Sarah Margaret Mackey. I go to Christchurch St Ives, and I'm in Red Street. Uh, what are you hoping to learn about God whilst you're in Fiji? Yeah, I think I'm hoping that I'll learn that God can use any opportunity um, to do His work. Um, that it doesn't matter about us or how good we are at sharing the gospel. It's all about how God wants His message to go out among all people. Uh, I think I want to learn um, what it looks like for people in Fiji if you follow Him. So um, see, yeah, what people over there do and how to talk to us. How are you hoping to grow in Fiji personally? Yeah, I think I'm hoping that I'll grow um, in yeah, just seeing that any opportunity God gives us and um, where we're supposed to use, uh, I think I'll grow in an awareness that there are opportunities in my life to share the gospel that I don't take um, and that pressure environment in Fiji will yeah, better prepare me to 
you use those opportunities once you get back to Australia? I think uh, first and foremost, I'd love to grow in my faith um, and also in my reliance on God um, and also just my flexibility when it comes to food detail. <laughs> Uh, what are you feeling nervous about? Uh, I think I'm feeling most nervous about doing ministry to so many different groups of people. Um, so whether it's differences in age or differences in culture, um, yeah, just being able to adapt really quickly depending on the audience that you're talking to, depending on whether it's a kids group or a youth group talk, or whether you're running a Bible study, just being able to really quickly adapt and change depending on who you're talking to. Okay. I'm nervous about how much of the trip is on us and how much we have to prepare, so like talks and kids programs um, and how much of it is on like whether we go like and talk to people, um, yeah, and how much we have to do, you know, yeah. So apart from spending a month with me, what are you excited about? <laughs> That's hard to beat. Um, I think I'm really excited about seeing how the one gospel message is the same. Um, can be shown so differently in a different culture, how different people engage with the same message um, and seeing how the way that we do it in Australia might not be the only way to do it, which I think is the trap we can fall into. I'm just excited to see how the same message can be told in so many different ways. Uh, I know it's a bit of a cop out, but I think I'm just excited for the trip as a whole because there's so many like little bits and pieces that are all coming together. Um, so many different things to be excited about, um, and I'm excited to see um, how they all come together and all of the like, expected things that come, unexpected things that come in. Um, in between them. Can we thank them for uh, coming out the show? We thank you for the Christians and churches in Suva, uh, and we ask that you would enable us to be clear as we teach our training material. Lord, we pray that through this, um, locals might be encouraged to understand the Bible and read it for themselves. Uh, we also thank you so much for the existing partnership that um, Year 13 has with the Anglican, the Methodist, and the Baptist churches in Suva. Lord, please help us to maintain and build upon those relationships so that we can better share the gospel with the people there. Help us to learn to serve well with our hands and our words and our ears, all for your glory. Amen.
Bible with you. Uh, so the uh, passage today is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Uh, in my Bible, that's on page 2366. But you guys can just uh, read along as it comes on the screen. Starting from verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Thanks, Josh. Well, the moment has come. The setting is complete. God's word has been read. We've gathered from afar, and some of us have even got dressed up for the occasion. Something important is clearly going on here this evening. Something exciting, something significant, something that's perhaps even a little bit serious. Now, don't hear me wrong. There's real joy and there is real delight as we meet here together tonight. And yet there's a weightiness around what we're doing as we take our beloved children, these students of Year 13, and commission them to serve the churches of Fiji with the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at such a weighty time as this, it's only right that we pause to consider what this means, what they're actually doing beyond the logistics, what this message is, this message that Jesus Christ is Lord, and how that message is delivered through such a bunch as this. For while it's true that all Christians are supposed to be sharing the that Jesus Christ is Lord, there's something unique about missionaries heading off to another place, another country far from home. And so we're going to think about that through this passage of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. We're going to consider it under two headings as we look at it together tonight. The impressive ministry, the impressive ministry and the unimpressive messenger. But first and foremost, let's pray and ask God to help us understand his word, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak into our circumstances. You tell us surprising things, things we may not have heard before, things we may be hearing not just for the first time perhaps, but certainly this time they will impact us. Help us to understand your word. Help me to be clear. And Father, show us the good news of Jesus and our part within it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we start there in verses 1 to 6, uh, the impressive ministry. Although perhaps when you hear that phrase, it sounds maybe like a contradiction in terms to you. Impressive ministry? Really? Impressive? How could anyone describe being a minister, a church minister, or a missionary going to another country? Impressive. Ask any Australian what they would describe as the profession that is the most impressive out there. Researchers tell us that nurses and paramedics top the list. 
Ministers are a long, 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 long way down if they appear at all. <coughs> but ministers and missionaries are impressive, not because of what the world thinks about them, or rather their ministry is impressive because they are on a mission from God. It's just as Paul writes there in verse 1. It's through God's mercy that we have this ministry. It's a gift from Him. This calling has not been chosen by your child or by me or any other Christian for that matter. No, no, no. It's been received through God's mercy to us personally and as a display of God's mercy to the entire world. So while nurses and paramedics may be the professions most trusted by Australians, and there is indeed a mercy mission. However, God's mercy to the world, God's mercy to Fiji, is not by sending them more nurses and more paramedics, rather his mercy is shown in sending Christians who minister the gospel to others. And since this ministry originates from God, and is an expression of his mercy to the world, well then, we don't lose heart, no matter how low being a missionary rates in the eyes of other people in the world. In fact, so confident are we of God's, the rightness of God's choice that verse 2, we do not use deception. We don't hide our true colours from people. Year 13 is a public ministry, a public mission. Our, our dealings are visible. Year 13 is not some secret society or some cult doing shameful things behind closed doors. And nor do we distort the word of God and reshape it and twist it to make it more tasty like some kind of bait and switch trick. But there's nothing, there's nothing shameful about God's plan of salvation in Jesus and nothing shameful about those who minister it. Hence we happily commend ourselves to every person's conscience in the sight of God. Although we've got one and only. That if it is so useful, so upfront, so truthful, so accurate, so open, so impressive, then why isn't everyone in the world a Christian already? I mean, Jesus, you know, came 2,000 years ago. That's long enough, isn't it? Why isn't everyone a Christian yet? I mean, if the truth is so plain to see, then any half-intelligent person should understand and come flooding and be saved. We cry out, Jesus is Lord, salvation is free in his name, and we should hear the, the thundering run of feet, shouldn't we? If it is so true. So where is the flood of people? Why do we need to keep sending ministers and missionaries out to other countries to tell other Well, it seems the reason is here, and we're given it in verse 3, it's because it is veiled to those who are perishing. The truth can't be seen, can't be heard without removing the veil. It's a little bit like this banana. Uh, none of us have ever seen this banana before tonight, I suspect. Uh, but I'm telling you, inside this banana, inside the veil of this banana, is a piece of edible fruit, not only that no one's ever laid eyes on before, but actually can be eaten. Its goodness, though, is entirely veiled to the outside world, at least for the moment. No one can see it until the veil is removed. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> what shop did this come from, Matt? Get another one for me. It's awesome. I'll finish that later. Now, just like God made bananas, He also gave us a gospel. And just like bananas need to be unveiled to reveal the goodness that is inside that no one else can see, so also the gospel of Jesus needs to be open, needs to be unveiled so that people can receive it. And it needs to be unveiled by those to whom it is already impacted, by ministers and missionaries who share it. And so even though the truth of the gospel, the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ is the image of God, even though that was revealed publicly when he first came, however, verse 4 the God of this age, the devil himself, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot perceive it. We saw that in our drama. The devil coming and taking and stealing it away, blinding the minds of unbelievers so they just cannot receive or understand. It's like trying to convince a person to eat a banana who's never seen a banana, experienced banana, 
taste the banana before. The mere fact of the banana's existence is not sufficient evidence to convince them to put it in their mouth, for their mind is veiled. But if someone comes to them with a banana, talks about the banana, what it is, how it works, opens the banana, eats the banana, is obviously delighted with the banana, and doesn't keel over and die because of eating the banana, then that other person just might have that veil removed and take a bite. They might be willing to try one for themselves. And so it is that we Christians don't preach about bananas. And nor do we preach about ourselves. Or the impressive ministry that we're a part of. Rather, verse 5, we preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. And perhaps the best part about this ministry, this ministry of preaching salvation, is that as we speak, we do something. As we share the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord, as we share that with the world, we're doing something that's identical to what God did in the first place when he created the world. For just as in creation, verse 6, God said, let the light shine out of darkness, so it is that God brings to life every person who hears the gospel and believes it exactly the same way. For each and every person in our world is wrapped up in a veil. Veiled in chaotic darkness. And true life only begins when God gives us the light of the knowledge of the glory of him displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. And God delivers this miraculous work to each individual person, one at a time, in every part of the world, including the islands of Fiji. He delivers it. <laughs> through another person in whom it's already happened. God's light shining in our hearts, spoken out through our mouths, is what God then uses to bring light and life to others. It's an impressive ministry. That's what makes it so impressive. God's mercy to the world is to send ministers and missionaries of his life-giving word out into the world, not to condemn people, but to bring life to others. They might have what we have and have it forever. And there's no greater privilege, there's no greater task than this one. <laughs> Students of Year 13, there is nothing more impressive that you will do, that you can do, than to bring the good news of Jesus to the people in Fiji, yes, also to your churches, in fact, wherever you go. There's no work more merciful than that. There's no work more impressive or more necessary than that, unveiling the minds of unbelievers that they might receive the good news of Jesus, just as you have. And yet at the same time, we send very unimpressive messengers, don't we? The ministry itself might be impressive, but why do we all look so plain? <laughs> So unimpressive. So run of the mill ordinary. And now don't hear me wrong, these students are a gorgeous group indeed. We were you know, willing to post that on Facebook. They're lovely to look at. They are. And they are nice to know. I can personally attest that they are clean, living, articulate, intelligent, fun and interesting people to be around. Just don't go near the dorms. Just avoid the dorms. They're an embarrassment to no one. They're a delight to know. Amongst the staff, we rarely stop giving thanks for them, for this group, and how much we enjoy being with them. However, when they first arrived with us on O Week, we knew none of these good things about them. Their entry into Year 13 was nothing impressive at all. There was no fanfare of trumpets. The local population didn't come out singing hosannas as they low their coats and palm branches in front of the students. There's nothing about their appearance that would tell us they were mercifully sent by God. And you'd think that if the gospel of Jesus was so impressive, so life-changing, so inspiring, that, that God would actually deliver that message through more impressive people than this lot. Maybe some people who command our attention. People who others naturally stop to notice. So, you know, why not send a movie star, a rock star, or supermodels to, you know, Fiji? Brad Pitt, Jennifer Lawrence. Now that would gain everyone's attention, wouldn't it? I'm sure the Fijians would, would take notice of them. 
Or better still, in Fiji, an NRL player or a rugby player. In fact, last year when our students were there in Fiji, Jared Hang was there at exactly the same time, in some of the same towns that our students were in. And guess who all the locals flocked to? Yeah, not our students. Jared Hang was the man of the moment. But while celebrities are the best our world can send, the best our world can supply to deliver a message, that's not who we're sending to Fiji. That's not who God has gathered in our local churches of which they represent, of which many of you represent here in Australia either. Rather, God chooses to send the weak and the unimpressive people of the world to shame the strong and the clever and the beautiful. In his wisdom, God gathers and sends middle-aged, balding men like me and a handful of middle-of-the-road teenagers like them. There's nothing impressive about us. We didn't invite you here to be impressed tonight. No, like it says there in verse 7, we're nothing more than jars of clay. Just jars of clay. Simple, ordinary, unimpressive. And this is good. This is good because there's nothing better than something ordinary to display something that's beautiful. What better to display the glory of Jesus than unimpressive jars of clay like us? I think on it. You put the flowers in an ordinary clay vase, it makes the flowers more beautiful. No one thinks that those flowers grow out of a clay vase. The clay vase is just there to hold them up because we're supposed to be looking at the flowers, not the vase. The beautiful thing is what comes out. Likewise, the all-surpassing power of the gospel could not possibly originate with us, with me, with unimpressive clay jars such as us. And in fact, the more unimpressive we are, the more the glory of God shines forth, the more the gospel can be seen, the more astounding the power of the gospel appears. So verse 8, for us to be hard-pressed on every side but not crushed, to be perplexed and puzzled but not fall into despair, how is that possible in our world? Not by our doing. That's Jesus at work in us. Or to be persecuted, verse 9, rejected by the whole world as complete fools, but not abandoned by God. How can that be? <laughs> to be struck down repeatedly by life and circumstances in poor health as you hear them coughing throughout the night and hardship, but not destroyed so that we let go of our faith. It's just not humanly possible. It just isn't. That's the power of the gospel. God at work in us. In worldly terms, it's a little bit embarrassing to be so ordinary. It's shameful to be so knocked around, to appear so unimpressive. But friends, this is the genius of God. That even because of the dying humiliation of our bodies, verse 10, the life of Jesus may be revealed in us, in our bodies more clearly than in any person who looks and sounds like they have it all together. Such is the wisdom of God to deliver his gospel through unimpressive people, unimpressive messengers, who, like us, have been given over to death. For in, for in an unimpressive messenger, there can be no mistake as where true life comes from. So then, verse 12, while death is at work in us, life is at work in those who receive our message. The friends and family members of year 13, hear this. Only the sustaining power of God can take this unimpressive bunch of students, remove them from their homes, connect them with one another, Shape them and reshape them through study. Lift their eyes to the needs of people in another nation and then move them across the ocean to a place where they have no language and no customs and no connections of their own and then somehow use them to commend Christ to complete strangers such that true life might be revealed in them. There's nothing impressive about us that makes all this happen. It's all of God. It's God doing the work that only God can do. 
and as a work that we delight in, as a work that we rejoice in to take part in, and to do that sowing and sharing that others might receive life. So while the messages are unimpressive, the ministry of the life giving gospel is always impressive because it always makes a difference. And long may it do so to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Dare I say it, I think we've left the best aspect of our U13 mission to Fiji to last, and that is our local church missions. It's during this time that the students get to spend 10 days with a local community and a local church doing ministry. Some of the local church mission teams are located in towns, but many are in villages. Some are, bit, some are in built up areas but some are in areas that are still recovering from Cyclone Winston. All are in communities and churches who are keen to partner with Youth 13 for the sake of the Gospel. This year we have seven local church mission teams spread throughout Fiji. On the main island of Viti Levu, we've got teams heading to Nakavu, Namui Manda, Singatoka and Raiwonga. On Vanilla Levu, we've got a team in Draketi. And on Tabiini, we have two teams, one in the north and one in the south. Most teams are made up of anywhere between 10 and 12 students. Uh, Tabiini South is our smallest team with just seven heading down there. It's at this point that I wish to acknowledge and thank our large leadership team. Uh, not all of them will be here tonight, but for those who are here, could I just please ask you to stand where you are? Don't be shy. Uh, one, of the, one of the major contributing factors of us being so effective and having such a broad reach in Fiji is the leadership team that God has blessed us with. Many of these guys uh, take time off work and take time off study uh, to spend their time and energy serving your students and serving the people of Fiji. These guys work tirelessly when we're in country. But not only when we're in Fiji, when we're at home as well, maintaining relationships uh, and working hard with your students to prepare them well for our time in Fiji. So can we just take a moment to thank them for their time and energy.
Hello everyone, my name is Nathaniel Piedrich. My home church is the Sache Gemeindemissionswerk in Hamburg, in Germany. Um, but I currently go to the Kalantai Church. Uh, I would like to pray especially for our local church mission teams. Our God and Heavenly Father, I give you great thanks for so many young Christians follow you and who have been growing in their faith here at year 13 and over the last couple of months. I thank you that you still call disciples into your fellowship and send them out into the world to build your kingdom. You equip us with truth in your holy word so that we can go to Fiji and share the gospel with those who don't know you yet. I pray especially for the local church mission teams as we will be staying at people's homes, will be, that we will be a blessing and not a burden for them. That everything we do and say be a testimony for your glory and encouragement for those who we stay with. Please help us in those areas of Fiji where your 13 hasn't been yet to do your ministry faithfully and to continue in the partnership with the local villagers. God, I pray that we will not proclaim ourselves, but your gospel and your kingdom, and that we will you will provide situations and conversations to do so. Enable us at all time to trust in you, even and especially when we fail. Thank you for the great support that we have in our families, our churches, and our leaders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Nathaniel. Well, friends, as I hope you can see, Year 13, we try and make a, a real difference in Fiji, giving local churches more opportunities to do what they do already, more capacity to engage in mission locally, uh, helping to train new leaders to carry the gospel forward. We do training with the pastors while we're there as well, and bringing Christian encouragement to communities still recovering from Cyclone Winston, and who I was made aware as I came here tonight are currently under threat right now from two more cyclones in the South Pacific, as if they haven't even had enough trouble already. But Fiji also makes a profound difference in the life of Year 13 students. There's a whole lot of grads sitting here tonight, speckled throughout. Uh, would you raise your hand if you're a graduate of Year 13? Okay, it's great to have you guys here. We're stoked that you're here tonight. Six hundred former graduates uh, of Year 13 to date, all whose lives have been affected, not just by the program in part and as a whole, but also and in particular by what happens in Fiji. <laughs> all our students are changed by what happens when they go there, challenged and stretched by God in all kinds of amazing ways, and their horizons lifted to see that God is the God of the whole world. What does that look like? It's, it's one thing for us to say we have a big impact. It's more important to see what those in Fiji say about that impact and how important it is to them in their walk with Jesus and as they do ministry and mission in that country. And so I'd ask you to put your eyes to the screen and let's hear from Claude, who is the Dean of the Cathedral in Suva, as he explains the impact of uh, having Year 13 come year after year. Hello, my name is uh, Claude and I serve as the the Dean of the Holy Trinity Cathedral here in Suva, Fiji. I've been in partnership and working together with Year 13s for a number of years now, uh, four years to be uh, specific, and we've seen many great things happen. We've, uh, we've been involved in activities such as uh, leaders in training, youth, youth exchanges and youth, youth services. We've had uh, visitation and ministry to villages and in a couple other areas in here in Fiji. We've seen many great things happen. Number one, one of the benefits, many, many benefits of it is that the gospel continues to be proclaimed. And that's really very fundamental to our partnership. Number two is that uh, leaders and people who uh, call themselves Christians here in Fiji and, and leaders, they continue to be encouraged and their gifts begin and continue to be stirred up. The other ones are, you know, when we have visitations to the villages, that this just great things happen. There's, uh, you know, people get encouraged in their Christian faith. Just to see people from, from beyond our shores come and, uh, and just worship, pray, live with them. Uh, the gospel continues to be. Uh, 
their lives have been being transformed. And one of the great things is that when year 13 leaves, you know the promises of, of gospel where of, of scriptures where the word of God does not return void. You know, they, lives are being changed dramatically. You, you see the changes after they live. And, and so we're thankful to God for that. And uh, I, I'm sure also the, the, the young people that come, year 13s that come, their lives have been touched and transformed. So, you know, well, in, in addition to the gospel being proclaimed, people are being stirred up to, uh, to live out and to share the Christian faith and uh, people's lives are being transformed. There's also the, um, you know, the church is being encouraged because we see, especially the, the young people of, uh, of our churches here in Fiji, they see other young people from Australia coming in and they say to themselves, hmm, you know, uh, what, 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 uh, what an amazing thing to see young people decided to spend uh, a year of a certain portion of their life you know, doing gospel and exploring uh, ministry and things like that. And so, uh, you know, we look forward to continued partnership with the and, uh, and, and I, for one, continue to be inspired, continue to be encouraged, and, and even so, I'm trying to, uh, the next couple of years, using the same model that year 13 uses, uh, maybe what we can actually have it in, in, the, in Fiji here in the churches. So we look forward to it. And then probably one of the, the biggest things also is the partnership in the churches. It's the body of Christ coming together uh, to encourage, to teach, and to proclaim the gospel. I think that's one of the great things. So I really encourage young people to join, and thank you, Karen, for, uh, for really speaking into and allowing your children to explore one of the greatest things in their life and that is to become ambassadors of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, what we're hoping is that you can see that uh, this is not a one-off mission, this is not a one-off moment where we disappear for a little while and come back and that's it. No, this is part of a long chain of mission work that's been going on for a number of years now and we pray, God will be so kind, it would continue on for many years to come. Our vision is always to ensure that this year's Year 13 group builds on the work of previous years to impact beyond even what has already been done in the past, to strengthen our partnerships with those local churches and communities, to open new doors further and head to new parts of the nation to serve the Fijian people, to encourage the gospel. It's already been delivered there but to deliver it further and into communities where we've not been. Well, that leaves us with only one thing left to do tonight, and this is perhaps the most important thing of all, and that is to commission our students formally. I'll invite them all now to come up on the stage and to commission them. As Christians, what we do is we pray over them. And so I'm going to invite three people to come forward and to lead all of us in prayer for our students. Uh, one is a staff member, Amelia Becky, a parent of one of our students, Sam. I'm going to invite Louise Cunningham to come forward. And one of our graduates from a former year, Harry Crutches. I said they were only impressive before, but they're not, are they? They're great that much. Well, let's uh, bow our heads and uh, commit them to the Lord for this mission ahead and all that they will be doing together and to start alongside them. Uh, please pray along with me. Uh, tonight I'll be praying uh, specifically for the staff and leadership team uh, heading over. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this group of students and we thank you for this amazing opportunity you've put before us. Uh, we love these students, God, and we are so aware of the mammoth task ahead. Uh, we ask you, God, to give us all that we need to accomplish this task. And we know we can trust you to be faithful. We ask you, God, for patience as we lead this group, that we would be good reflectors of your great patience with us. We ask you, God, for wisdom and discernment, that we would be able to choose well and to guide well and to point the students to Jesus all the time. We ask you, God, for good health for our team, that we wouldn't be constrained by sickness or injury, but able to serve the students and to serve you in good health. We ask for an extra measure of love, for self-sacrifice and focus, that the students would feel cared for and encouraged when far from the familiarity of home. We pray that you would keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on you, God. 
We ask for diligence in our own spiritual health, heading over and before we head over. Father, help us to draw close to you in our prayer life and in our Bible reading. Help us to be ready to leave Sydney feeling refreshed and feeling alive. Lord, please grant our families uh, health and patience and joy in what you are doing in Fiji while we're away. Uh, Father, we, we leave our children, our spouses and our loved ones behind. And we ask that they would not feel abandoned, but instead feel the joy of sending us and great joy in what you do in people while we're away. Above all things, God, may we, may we trust you, honour you, and be good reflectors of Jesus, because of his great love. Amen. We're now going to pray together for the students. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the year 13 students. We thank you that you have made them in your image and that you have remade them in the image of Christ. We praise you for the opportunity of this year of discipleship and thank you for their journey into Fiji only a month away. We pray for them now that you would grant them your spirit in preparation for their time in Fiji. Please prepare them mentally, spiritually and physically. Continue to give them a confident trust in you and your sovereignty. Give them good mental and physical health and continue to give them wisdom to love and care for one another. As these Year 13 has arrived in Fiji, Please give them patience to adjust to a different culture from their own. Give them eyes to observe and learn and understand the similarities and the differences between themselves and the Fijian people. Uphold them as they face significant poverty and at the same time human needs which are common to all of us. Loving Lord, please give the team love, compassion and humility as they seek to serve those they live among. May their love and lives be on show for your glory. Please use them as they serve the Fijian people, likewise made in your image. And as a result, may the year 13 students and the Fijians they serve grow in knowledge of your love for them through the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Um, my name is Harry, and I'll be praying for the Fijians and the leaders of this endeavor. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are not only the God of Sydney, Australia, but the whole world. Um, Father, we think of the Christians who are in Fiji and the leaders there um, who do mission there for 12 months a year, um, even when the year 13 students aren't there. We pray you keep us accountable in Australia to be praying for these people and the work that goes on there for the rest of the year. Father, we think particularly of those who are affected by the cyclone last year. Um, and we pray that you will help them continue to rebuild. Father, thank you for the great opportunity that Year 13 has to go to Fiji, to learn from the faith and the culture of the people there. We pray that you will bless the team with safety in spreading your gospel to the people. And we pray for open ears and hearts. We pray particularly for the leaders who graciously give up their time and energy to guide the students throughout their trip. We pray in the lead up for the trip that you will give them calmness and a gospel focus in their preparation. Please help them plan and prepare activities that will stretch and grow the students and encourage them to be more courageous in evangelism. Lord, we ask you to bless the leaders with health and energy and most importantly, hearts that continuously seek you and further in your kingdom. We thank you for Trin and her years of service to your ministry. You gifted her and Matt so abundantly in their ability to organise and care for the students. Lord, we see how clearly you are invested in this ministry in blessing with such capable and spiritual leaders. Please be with the families of those who travel over for a month and keep us who stay in Australia accountable and passionate in prayer. We know the leaders are extremely capable, but it is you, the work of your Holy Spirit, and the prayer of your people that will make this mission successful. So we pray that you will continue to help us to be prayerful and rely on you throughout the duration of the trip. We pray all this for the glory of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> let's, uh, as the students leave the stage, let's uh, encourage them, shall we? <laughs> we're all going to stand and we're going to sing uh, what might be a new song to, for many of you. This will be our final song tonight, but a song called Lion the Lamb, one that's become a new favourite of uh, the 13 students in the last few weeks. 
Uh, would you stand and join us as we sing this song together before we close?
very kind people at Dane Bank have asked us to vacate the site by 9.30. They're going to turn the lights off at 9.30. So that gives us uh, uh, 35 minutes or so to find our belongings, to find the people we care about, um, give them a hug, uh, say hello to others, and then please make your way out of the site so that uh, we can help them close up on time. As you go, we'd love you to take with you those things you found at the seats when you came in. Uh, the program for prayer for 2017, this is for the mission. You'll notice there's prayer points there per date and of course per matters and various visits that are there. Uh, if you see spare ones around, you feel free to take them and give them to others that they might pray also. And likewise, you'll find those little discover packages on the seats and around you. Uh, take those as well. Think, well, what I've seen tonight, do I know someone who's in year 12, maybe in year 11, two years out? for whom Year 13 would be a very good idea, good idea for them to think about that they might grow as we see these guys are growing, that they might have an impact beyond who they are and where they are right now and then be able to do that through Year 13. We've got an open day coming up, the information's in there. So please take as many of those you'd like and pass them around to anyone who you think that might be useful for. And please try to stay at home. We only like to hear good stories about that as I'm sure you do also. Well, we're going to finish with uh, a Year 13 tradition. Some of you who are in Anglican churches might recognise this if you go to the early morning service sometime. Uh, but this is something that we do every week at our afternoon prayers. It's a call and response. So I'll, in a moment I'll invite everyone to stand. I'm going to say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And they're going to shout that out. And you're welcome to join them. In the name of Christ, amen. So it goes, I'm going to say, Go in peace, love and serve the Lord, and say, in the name of Christ, I mean, you're welcome to join them. And that's how we're going to close our night. And from there, we're just going to uh, vacate and move out from here. So would you please stand as we conclude. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.